ओके गाइस टुडे विल बी द लास्ट बट वन क्लास एंड टू मोर कॉन्सेप्ट्स फॉर रिमेनिंग आई विल फिनिश टुडे पार्ट ऑफ योर ग्रामर एंड नेक्स्ट क्लास विल बी अ फुल टेस्ट आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अ फुल टेस्ट इंक्लूडिंग एवरीथिंग दैट विल बी अ पार्ट ऑफ योर प्रगति टेस्ट अ सिमिलर वेरी सिमिलर टेस्ट आई विल टेक वीएसटी very similar test and that will be our final preparation so next class which is on uh, friday today is wednesday two more concepts i'm going to cover important concepts one is negative uh, one is your direct and indirect uh, speech okay reported speech and the other one is prepositions you need this to come to find out errors you also need this to complete your sentence structure questions so we will just complete that today and next class is going to be a very similar test you'll have a very similar test same as your pragati paper okay so let's get started i'm going to share my screen now yeah samir i'm doing good thank you samir for asking okay let me start with prepositions which is easier and then we will move to the other part okay i believe all of you can see my screen about prepositions you have been using prepositions for some time now nothing new about it but uh, <clears throat> only when sometimes you are confused in sentence correction you don't know where the preposition should be placed or how it should be used so some confusion sometimes happens so not always but sometimes so we will just see the rules yeah good good screen is visible very good preposition is a word which is used before a noun a noun phrase or a pronoun connecting it to another word the dictionary definition okay basically you have to remember the word connection preposition connects okay one word with another one pronoun with another one noun with a pronoun so it will connect or if i say the ball is over the table under the table beside the table around the table everything all these words are preposition it is just talking about where it is and how it is connected now kinds of preposition there are simple preposition which consist of only one word in on at with against one words are there okay then you have compound preposition which consists of two or more words compound preposition consists of two or more words okay like this instead of in the middle of by the side of in front of all these will be compound preposition that means more than one word is used but nonetheless they will again talk about position position of the noun or the pronoun okay in a given sentence so position yes next these are some of the prepositions that you have used you have been using on through behind for beneath against abroad without during over beside across among against below behind under over all these all these you are already using so nothing new over here you just know that this is what they do uh, now as per the types of preposition three types are there place of prep preposition of place okay uh, pre preposition of time and preposition of direction based on the function what is the function that they are doing these three things can be predicted by prepositions i can tell you the place the time and the direction now let's see the examples okay some preposition show where something happens they are called preposition of place where like sunny very sunny sunny is sitting under the tree under so placement of sunny so they are called preposition of place the wooden floor uh, there is a wooden floor underneath the carpet where is it underneath the carpet some geese flew over their house where did they fly over so preposition of place john and sarah were hiding inside the wardrobe where were they hiding inside again everything is talking about the placement of the subject here it is talking about where are john and sara they are inside the water there was a tree beside the river where is the tree beside the river tree is the noun you're talking about the placement of the tree i have a friend who lives in america where does your friend live in america so placement of your fr friend place 
in besides all these which talks about the placement is known as prepositions of place. Next one. Some prepositions show when something happens. They are called preposition of time. When? When you answer the question when, then they are called preposition of time. School starts at nine o'clock. When does the school start? See, you ask yourself this question. If the question you can ask looking at the sentence is where, then it is preposition of place. If the question is when, then the, it is preposition of time accordingly, okay? We are going to the zoo. When are you going to the zoo? We are going to the zoo on Saturday. So at and on. No, you can't watch your video. It's past your bedtime already. It's past your bedtime. So there is a bedtime. You have passed the bedtime. So here also it is a preposition of time. What time is it? It is past bedtime. Let's say bedtime is 9 p.m. So if it is 9.30, you say it is past bedtime. When did you visit your grandparents? I visited my grandparents during the summer. So the word when, question is again when, so during. You must finish the work by Friday. Okay, if you ask by when should I finish my work? You must finish the work by Friday. So by becomes the preposition of time. When will you finish your work? I will do my homework before dinner. So before. When every time you can ask the question when, every time. So that's why these become prepositions of time. I'm sure all of you know this. That's not the problem, okay? It's only when not to use that you should know. Some prepositions show where something is going, direction, okay? They are called preposition of direction. So three kinds, time, direction, and place. So you saw the time and you also saw the place preposition. Now it is direction. The boys chased after each other, okay? Like where, where did the boys chase after each other? The football rolled down the hill. Where did the football roll? It rolled down the hill. Okay. My voice, is it clear now? It's full volume. Is it clear now, Alan? What about the rest? Can you hear my voice? Is it clear to you? Okay, good, good. Okay, Ale. fine. A man was walking his dog along the river back. Where was the man walking his dog? Along the river back. The freeway goes right through the city. Where does the freeway go? It goes right through the city. So where? Direction. We are traveling towards Miami. Where are you traveling? We are traveling towards Miami. Again, a preposition of direction. After, down, along, all these, when they talk about direction, they are called preposition of direction. Some prepositions have got special uses, okay? Like of, O-F. Other than the three uses, that is you have direction, place, and time. Other than that, you also have some other prepositions, okay? These prepositions I have shown in separate boxes, uh, separate slides. Nothing is wrong with its salish. I was just telling you how many kinds of prepositions are there. We, I have not yet given you any sentence to correct, okay? It's not wrong, salish. You can say you can finish the work on Friday, okay? It's correct, nothing wrong. Yeah. Now, uses of off. Our modules are full of real life examples. I ate a plate of rice and a quarter of milk. We're talking about quantity over here. Off is talking about quantity in the second sentence. Would you like a glass of lemon juice? I need three pieces of paper. Most of the children in my class like education. There are several ways of cooking upma. Upma is Indian dish for all those who do not know. So we say there are three ways of cooking upma. So nothing, uh, these are other uses of preposition of. It is not, uh, what I want to show this is there are some preposition which go beyond time, beyond direction and beyond place. Here it is not talking on time or place. It is talking about containing something like modules are full of life. This is a plate of rice, quarter of milk, glass of, 
pieces of paper most of the children there are several ways these are again preposition okay and they have these various uses we come to the next one for uses for for is another preposition that all of you would know so preposition for i made this bookmark for mom for whom did you make so for mom is there room for me on the seat a particular seat and you're asking is there room for me on this seat i would like a new computer for christmas i would like a new computer for christmas we are going downtown for a meeting I made this gift for my mother. Is there place for me on the seat? Yeah, we did that. I'd like a new laptop for next year. Similar sentences, okay? But every time we are using a preposition over here called for. So other than <clears throat> the three functions, preposition can also be used over here to show possession. For whom? For mom, for me, for Christmas, for a meeting. Reason, you're giving a reason over here. Next, with. With is another preposition which you need to use with caution. He pounds nails with a hammer. With what? With a hammer. Mix the flour with water. Okay. What should I mix with the flour? You mix the flour with water. She painted the picture with her new paints. Would you like to come with us to the cinema? I can do, I can do difficult problems with help of with help from mom. Who is the man with the beard? So all these are again, you know, somebody possessing something, you're talking about it. So again, it's a relationship between nails and hammer, flour and water, picture and paint, uh, you uh, to cinema, problems with the help, uh, with help. All these are again connecting to nouns, but they are not definitively showing us any direction or place or anything. They are connecting, hence they are prepositions because they are connecting. The laborers are clamoring for hike in their wages, correct? Kavyuma, you are right. You can use that sentence, it is correct. Yes, neighbor, the laborers are clamoring. Clamoring means making a lot of noise for hike in their wages, correct. That's the right sentence. Yes, next. Accept. Now these are the prepositions where most likely if you cannot remember how to use, you may not be able to use it properly. So just I'm giving you example. I like all kinds of food except means other than upma. Upma is a kind of Indian food. Everyone likes chocolate except Tom. It's other than, except means other than. We go to school every day except Saturday and Sunday, or you can say except weekends. You should eat food instead of candy. You should eat food instead of candy. Dad is coming to the theater with us instead of mom. Dad is coming to the theater with us instead of mom. We could watch TV instead of reading books. So instead of this, we can do that. Instead of and accept are two kinds of prepositions which can be used in these situations. The examples that I have shown you. Then another use of preposition that is like, Kathleen looks like her dad, resemblance, has got a resemblance. Looks like someone means resembles. Andrew smiles like his mother, resembles again. Peter sings like a professional singer. Are these shoes the same as those? Sue is nearly as tall as the teacher, as, okay. My backpack is bigger than John's. Comparative, we are comparing. Dad is taller than all of us. So compared to us, dad is taller. This painting is more beautiful than that one, comparing one painting with other. The neighborhood streets are less busy than downtown streets. Then again, neighborhood streets compared with downtown streets. Again, you are showing the position. So some more of these words which are used with prepositions, used as prepositions. Now, prepositions are also used with adjectives and verbs. You need to be a little careful when you do that. So these are nothing new, guys. You already know it. I'm just trying to. Vipul, maybe you should log out and log in again if your screen is not displaying. I think the rest of us can see my screen if I'm not wrong. Give me a thumbs up on the screen if you can see it. 
if you can see okay very good thank you sohel yes next prepositions are used with some adjectives the adjectives in these examples are printed in color all the adjectives that you can see are printed in color okay dad was angry with us so angry dad was angry that is the adjective okay but with whom with us you are using a preposition with an adjective we were afraid of the big dog what we we, we were afraid of the big dog she isn't very interested interested is the adjective in is the preposition she isn't she is not very interested in sports john is very good at drawing at drawing mr lee is pleased with her work the teachers are always kind to us what's wrong with the computer what's wrong with the computer see all these are examples of prepositions being used with adjectives all the adjectives are in color and then you have prepositions in blank black okay here there are some verbs preposition used with verbs again the verbs are in color i'm looking i am what am i doing looking so verb i'm looking for my pencil have you seen it can you think of another word for pleased think can you think of of is the preposition here does this book belong to you so belong does this book belong is the verb to is the preposition over here we are listening to cds what are you listening we are listening to cds i agree with you never say i agree with you i agree with you it comes with a preposition many a times incomplete okay okay next tell me about the show you saw cut the cake into five pieces they borrowed money from the bank so borrowed what money from the bank so cut the cake into five pieces tell me about the show you saw so all these are again prepositions used with verbs okay next prepositions are also used with nouns the nouns in these examples are printed in color what's the answer to this question is there a reason for this delay what's the matter with you here's an example of good behavior congratulations on winning computer competition traffic can cause damage to the environment so all these words are again nouns along with which okay the prepositions are mentioned in color prepositions are mentioned in black the nouns are in color so now you know that there are three kinds of preposition time place and direction other than that there are prepositions which can be used with noun can be used with verb and can be used with other examples now this is your for you to try write the answers a cat was sitting dash the roof of my car you have to give a preposition of place maybe you could type in number 1 give me a preposition of the place type in the chat box okay on the roof of my car correct you can say on the roof of my car can i say over the roof of my car can i say over why not azish why not ankita no but why not give me the reason any specific reason you cannot use correct very good aniket okay over means something okay not attached and over the roof is already over the car okay and yes over means very high correct you raj so over is something at a dis like a uh, distance like there are eagles flying over my head that time i can say it will not have a surface like the roof 
it is unattached and much higher. The sun is shining brightly over my head. There will be a little more distance and it will be unattached, not attached, but the roof is attached to the car. So you will say the cat is sitting on the roof of my car, correct? Remember that, okay? Good that you know that, very good. No, about also we cannot use that. Okay, if you're giving answer for number two, let us wait. Some people were talking about the movie, correct? But I want the time, time during the movie, very good. In the bracket, whatever is given, you have to use that. So during the movie is actually the time, preposition of time, that's correct. About the movie is not time. It's a preposition nonetheless. It's not wrong, but it is not about time. During is the right one. Correct. Number three. A man was coming dash us on his bike. Talk about direction. Talk about direction. Let's see what you have given me. Towards. Very good. Towards. Very good. A man was coming towards us on his bike. Correct. The party starts dash six o'clock. Time. At six o'clock. Correct. Correct. At is the right answer. Number five. She put the book. You have to talk about place. Dash her bag. In her bag. Correct. In her bag. Once you get answer from me, do not type. Because you already everyone got the answer. Only the first time I'll take the answer. First few answers. Then you don't need to waste your time typing. Number six. We walk dash the street to the park. Place. Not along. Not along. You are going towards the park. No, between. No, 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 no. We walked across the street to the park. From one, from one side of the street to another side. So it will be across, not along. Across, yes. Across is the answer. Okay. We walked across the street to the park. Where? To the park. So preposition of the place. She keeps her slippers dash her bed. Place. Under. Under her bed or no, we can't say behind her bed, people know. Okay, you can say under the bed or besides the bed. Besides is also correct. Not down, also. No, not down. We cannot use down. We can use under. Under or besides. Okay. Can't say down the bed. What is down the bed? The bed itself is on the floor. So down the bed is wrong English. Okay. Near the bed, okay. You can say near the bed is fine. Near the bed is not wrong. Under is the perfect one, okay, of place. Next, number eight. We always wash our hands, dash, time. Before meals or after meals, both are correct, okay? Before meals is correct. If you write after meals, also correct. Both are correct. She ran, dash, the dog because he was frightened, direction. She ran. Away the dog. No, we cannot say away the dog. Had it been from, from is not given, no? cannot say. Away from two words you want to use. She ran away from the dog because she was frightened. Yeah, away from. If you want to use two words, it will be away from. Or far from. Okay, far from the dog because she was frightened. She ran far from the dog. Against, no, distance. We are talking about direction, direction. Away from the dog, okay? Against, we can't say, not against the dog. Away from the dog or far from the dog. Talk about direction. Yeah, far from the dog is correct or away from the dog is correct. These two, because she was frightened. Reason is given. Good. You got a hang of preposition now. Any queries about preposition? I don't believe there should be, okay, because so much so for the preposition. Uh, we will go to the next one. Before that, one more on preposition, then we will go. This is a worksheet for you. Fill it with. Here are dates, times, and years. See, the confusion is always between at, in, and on. You should know how to use at, in, and on, the preposition of time. One is given as an example, on Saturday. Number two, I want you to take a picture of this, guys, and do it. We don't have time to complete it now. Just take a picture. 
take a screenshot. For A and B and C, take a screenshot. You have to use preposition of place and time. This is for your practice. Take a screenshot and practice. Answers you can get on Google also. You do, if you just write and dis, uh, add December, in December, on December, Google itself will give you the answer. Just know the difference. Yeah, in the year, correct. In the year 1984, in July, yes, correct. For month, for year, all that, you know that what is to be used at 10 o'clock on Easter, on a particular occasion. So on Easter, on Thursday afternoon, at noon, if you are mentioning particular noon, then it will be on Thursday afternoon. I'll meet you on Thursday afternoon. Or if you're just saying noon, then it will be at noon on 25th March. Very good. Very good. Take a picture, guys, and solve it. C and D also. Take a screenshot of C and D also. Just a little practice for you to do. Know what is preposition, know how it is to be used. Because if you know it, a little revision will take you a long way. Done. I believe all of you must have finished prepositions now. These, these things, you must have taken it. Vipul, 16 number. What 16 number? There is no 16. What well, the first one? 16 is uh, dash half past two. We have our lunch at half past two. At. It'll be at half past two. Half past two is what? 2.30. Okay, 2.30. So at half past two. Or we have the meeting at half past two, at 80, at. Okay, good. Uh, this goes for your revision related to preposition. This one worksheet is for your practice. Worksheet number 34 okay, is for your practice. Can I stop sharing now if you have taken? Can we move on next to reported speech, the next topic for today? I hope you're clear about it. If you're not, I can explain a little more. Okay, very good. Good. So yes, most of you have said yes. You're good to go. I, I'll stop sharing this. And I'm going to take you through reported speech, another concept, which can confuse you. Reported speech is another concept. I just have 10 slides to show you. And then you'll solve some exercise on reported speech. Okay. First and foremost, why is it called reported speech? Why do we call it reported speech? Suppose I, uh, your teacher tells you something in school. Your teacher tells you tomorrow I'll take a test. You go home and your mom asks you what happened. And you go and say, mom, teacher told us that she will take a test tomorrow. So what you're doing, you're reporting. Yeah, because you're reporting something. You're reporting means you're telling what the teacher said, we do it in two ways. One way you exactly repeat what the teacher said. Secondly, you make changes in the tense, but not in the meaning. You make changes in the tense of the teacher's speech, but you do not change the meaning of the sentence. That is called reported speech. You are reporting. Okay. What the newspapers uh, or the news anchors or anybody who is need, reading the news, what do they do? They report something to you. Something somewhere has happened. They are the direct witness. They come back and report to us. So the speech that they use, there is a little bit of grammar that should be taken care of. Part of our grammar that should be taken care of, okay? Over there, which we need to be careful about. We just cannot write whatever we feel like writing over there. Now, what is that grammar you need to know? First, whatever I told you, there are two ways in which you can report another person's speech. Okay, direct speech and indirect speech. If you say exactly, if you say exactly, uh, I do not use YouTube. Okay, 
uh, one of you have asked if I can upload it. You take a screenshot, it's easier for you. I do not use YouTube because you already have so much of this on YouTube. So many are doing it already. So, and I work only for KIT right now, KIIT, Language School, that is where I work. So I only take up KIIT uh, work, which is to be done online, okay? Uh, personally, I do not do any, uh, I do not, I'm not present on any channel, okay? But you can. We'll see. I'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll try to. Okay. There are two ways. Yes. As I told you, there are two ways in which one can talk about another person's speech. Direct speech and indirect speech. Indirect speech is also called reported speech. Anyway, this is basic information. You know this. Example of direct speech. When the original words of the speaker are quoted or stated as he spoke them, that is direct speech. Exactly the way the speaker said. Rohan said, I want my book back. These are the words that are directly spoken by the original speaker, Rohan. Okay. But here there is a reported verb that is said, S-A-I-D, which is in past tense. But whatever Rohan is saying is in present tense. I want my book back. I want. This is in present tense. But you have put it with an inverted commas. That's why this is a direct speech. You're telling me exactly what Rohan told you. Hence, it's a direct speech, okay? Rohan said, I want my book back. It's a direct speech. Exactly what Rohan told you. You are using a reporting verb, but direct speech. Now, reported the same sentence. If I change it into reported speech, how will it look? When the original speaker's words are reported in one's own words, that is reporting or indirect or reported speech. Rohan said, I want my book back. This is direct speech. Rohan said that I becomes he, want becomes wanted, okay? My becomes his, then book back. These are the changes that happen in reported speech. The tense of the sentence changes from present, simple present to simple past. The tense has changed. In the first question, Rohan said, only the reporting verb was in past tense. Everything else was present tense. I want my book back. But when you change it into reported speech, the entire sentence changes into past tense. Rohan said that he wanted his book back. Entire sentence has changed. Here, Rohan speak is reported, but not in the exact words. If the meaning is same, but it is not Rohan's words. Okay. We don't use said to Vipul, we say told, uh, okay, he said to me. When you have an object, then you use to. Uh, he said to me or she said to him. When you have two, two people, one person talking to another, that time you can use said, otherwise it is only said. When you have a receiver of that action at that time. Okay, next one. While reporting a speech, some changes occur. Some changes occur while reporting a speech in the indirect speech, okay? And it is a little different from direct. It is usually the reporting verb that determines the tense and agreement in the indirect speech. So reporting verb is very important, okay? The following should be kept in mind while reporting a speech. Now look at the reporting verb, how to use. If the reporting verb is in the past tense in the question or in the direct speech, the reported speech is in the past tense. Look at both the examples. He said, I have forgotten the matter completely. Reporting verb is said. If in the question it is given to you in the said, in the answer also, when you change, everything will get into past tense. He said that he had forgotten the matter completely. I have forgotten becomes Past perfect, had forgotten. He said that he had forgotten. How do you know whether you should convert it into past tense or not? By looking at the reporting verb. Said is the reporting verb. By looking at that, you decide. Next. If the reporting verb is in the past tense, but the statement being reported is a universal truth, the tense of the indirect speech is in the same tense as the direct speech. Yes. 
for universal truth guys you cannot change the sentence tense universal truth means which is true everywhere okay? like the sun rises in the east it's not that only in india the sun rises in japan in us everywhere around the world the sun rises in the east it's a universal truth you cannot say she said that the sun rose in the east you cannot change it into past tense because it is always true so it will take simple present tense even in reported speech also it will take simple present tense like if i say quran is a holy book the bible is a holy book it's a holy book in every country not only in the christian country or muslim countries or uh, hindu countries no nothing like that the holy books are holy everywhere around the world so you will say she said that the quran is a holy book the tense will not change it remains simple present tense the tense is not going to change okay so she said the sun rises in the east when you change that into indirect speech it will be she said that the sun rises in the east tense will not change the tense will not change okay remember for universal truth while reporting universal truth the tense will not change next number 3 if the reporting verb is in present the tense of the indirect speech is also present tense yes the tense will also remain like says s a y s says that is reporting verb mohit says that is you know in the present tense so mohit says i have done the work answer when you change it into indirect speech mohit says that he has done the work you will not say he had done the work because the reporting verb is in present tense of the sentence will also be present so have will change to has but not had you will not change because of this reporting verb says because of says had it been said then have would have turned into had depending on the reporting verb changes happen next while reporting questions the indirect speech is introduced by verbs such as asked and enquired yes if there is a question mark if you are reporting a question the question mark will change into asked or enquired for example he said can you do the work he asked me if i could do the work so can you do the work question mark the instead of the question mark in the reported speech we have replaced the question mark with the word asked we have replaced the question mark with the word asked so he asked me if i could do the work next prem asked where do you live prem inquired where i lived okay. question mark in the direct speech changes to inquired in the indirect speech so this is rule number 4 for reported speech when you are using converting direct to indirect speech if there is a question mark it will be replaced with the word like asked and enquired yeah okay good we go to the next one now pronouns in in uh, indirect speech in the direct speech change in the indirect speech in relation with the immediate speaker not in relation with the original speaker so whoever is speaking according to that vishal said i have no time to talk to you when you change this into indirect speech it will vishal said that he i becomes he have becomes had vishal said that he had no time to talk to me okay so immediate speaker is me so it will you will not become him you will become me it will change in relation to who is speaking i am speaking now so i will tell the speech i will report the speech as if vishal was speaking to me not as somebody else so vishal said i have no time to talk to you in reported speech will be vishal said that he had no time to talk to me you becomes me because i am reporting to you so i will report to you as if vishal spoke to me i will not talk to you as if vishal spoke to somebody else if somebody else's name is given then it is different 
if I write Vishal said to Ravi, then in the sentence it will be. Then in the sentence you will change accordingly. Okay, next one. Six expressions of nearness. Expressions of nearness in time or place okay. in the direct speech change to expressions of distance in indirect speech. Okay. For example, this becomes that in reported speech. This will become that. Now becomes then. Okay. Suppose I say, Ravi said, I'm going to have my lunch now. If this I have to report, I'll say Ravi said that he was going to have his lunch then. Now has become then at that time. Okay. Here becomes there. Ago becomes before in the sentence. Ago will become before. Thus becomes so. T H U S. Thus becomes so. Henceforth becomes then onwards. Henceforth becomes then onwards. Tomorrow becomes the next day. Yesterday becomes the day before. Last night, the night before. Today becomes that day. These are the changes that will happen. Okay, henceforth, we say sometimes, henceforth, I will be in charge of this. Suppose somebody said that, you have to report it. You'll say, ma'am said, then onwards, she was in charge. If you're reporting me, suppose I tell you, henceforth, I will be in charge. You have to report to me by using then onwards. Ma'am said, then onwards, she was in charge. It will go that way, that she was in charge. Okay, fine, next one. Tomorrow, the next day, like, I will give you a test tomorrow. Ma'am said that she would give us a test the next day. Ma'am said that she would give us a test next day, the next day. Tomorrow becomes the next day. Yesterday becomes the day before. Last night, the night before. Today becomes that day. Suppose I'm talking today, I say, Today, I will give you a test. You'll tell, ma'am said she will give a test that day. Because today, so you would have become that day, right? So six expressions of nearness and time or place in direct speech, they change into expressions of distance. These are now distance in indirect speech. Do you remember this? Thank you. That's it for reported speech we did a reported speech this was this was the rule that you needed to know now for some practice this is your practice exercise for reported speech yeah you have statements question request and order okay Change the direct speech into in a reported speech. Choose past simple of ask, say, and tell that that you do. But you do it now. Do it now, then I'll give you some time. After that, I'll discuss the answer with you. Question number one to six first. First you do, then I'll discuss. Okay, Tharushi, you're right. Where we use sit to, Vipul, I told you, where we use sit said to, okay, I've answered this question. Do it, only question number one to five for some time, take some time, do it. You have to give me the reported version of the question I've given you. She will be leaving tomorrow is wrong. Whoever wrote that answer is wrong. Tomorrow changes to the next day. Okay.
finish till 15, then I'll show you the answers also. First, you do it. It's a practice for you. You do it, then you check how many you're getting correct. Guys, don't write the answers for me. I will show you the answers. Just write the answers for you. When I give you the answers, you should be able to match them. Okay, so write it for yourself. 15 questions are there. Once you're done, I'll show you the answers. Jivan, finish till the uh, till fifteen. I'll go back to one again. Don't worry. I'll take you again. Okay, I'm sure you must be done, most of you. Again, I'm showing for some of you, those who do not do from number one. Again, check from question one. You must write the answer in your notebook and then you will check whether you're getting the right one or not. Remember the tense will change. Finished karma, very good. Those who finished, done, very good. I hope, Jeevan, you are able to do from one. Once you're done, let me know. I can show you the answer. Okay, very good. Those who are done. Anybody else still doing? You want me to uh, be on this page or move to the answers? Done, very good, very good. Those are doing very good, finished. 14 and 15, okay, I'll take you to 14 and 15. Here, okay, there are I think 20. After 14 and 15 also, some more questions are there till 20. Those who finished 14 and 15 can finish the rest four till 20.
Okay, I'm now moving to the answers, guys. Please check. All of you must do because it's the minimum practice you're getting. It's not like the maximum practice, it's the minimum practice you're getting in all this. Okay. Mixed reported speech one, these are the answers. First one was, don't do it. Number one, answer is, she told me to do it. No, it cannot be she told me to do it. She told me not to do it. Okay, not should be there. She told me not to do it. Okay. Next. Number two, question number two was, I'm leaving tomorrow. Answer is, she said that she was leaving the next day. That will be used and tomorrow becomes the next day. She was leaving the next day. Number two, question number two, she said that she was leaving the next day. Number three, Please get me a cup of tea. It's like a request. She asked me to get her a cup of tea. Me becomes her. She asked me to get her a cup of tea. Number three. She asked me to get her a cup of tea. She requested me is also correct, Ankita. You can write she requested me. That's correct. Number four. She got married last year. Number four, let's see the answer. She said that she got married last year. She said that she got married last year. You can also say the year before. Last year can also become the year before. Instead of last year, you can write, she said that she got married the year before. Number five, be quick. It's like an order, be quick. She told me to be quick. You can also say she ordered me to be quick. She ordered me to be quick is also correct because it sounds like an order, be quick. Somebody tells you be quick, sounds like an order. You can say that. Okay, number six. Number six, the question was, could you explain number four, please? Number six, answer is, she asked me to explain number four. Okay, she asked me to explain number four. Then number seven, where do you live? She asked me where I lived. She asked me where I lived. Number eight, let's see what's number eight. We went to the cinema and then to a Chinese restaurant. We went to a cinema and then to a Chinese restaurant. No, she will not advise you to be quick. She can ask you to, or she can order you to, not advise. You don't advise somebody to be quick, okay? Uh, number eight, we went to the cinema and then to the Chinese restaurant. Let's see number eight, what's the answer? She said that they went or they had been. You can also use they had been. They had been to the cinema and then to a Chinese restaurant. They went to the cinema and then to a Chinese restaurant or they had been to the cinema and then to a Chinese restaurant. All the possible answers are given here and some possible answer I'm telling you. Other than that, anything will, will not be right. Okay, so I'm giving you the options of what will be right. Okay, we go to number nine now. Question number nine. I'll come and help you at 12. Somebody telling you? They had gone. No. Uh, okay, yes, yes, Ankita, you can. Uh, okay, number nine. I'll come and help you at 12. Number nine answer is, she said that she would come and help me at 12. She would 
come and help me at 12 she said that she would come and help me at 12 number 9 Eight, I already, uh, yes, had been, had gone to the cinema. Okay, you can write had gone to the cinema, Not nothing wrong in that. Ankita, you can write, yeah. Uh, number 10, what was the question? What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing tomorrow for number 10? She asked me what I was doing the day after. Better if you write the day after. Okay. She asked me what I was doing the day after. Tomorrow becomes the day after. In speaking, if you report that she asked me what I was doing tomorrow was okay. But in writing, you please uh, adhere to the rules of change. What changes according to that, you adhere to the rules. Yeah, the next day, correct. The next day is the answer. Okay, number 11. We go to number 11. Don't go. Just a simple statement. She told me not to go. Don't go. She told me not to go. A, can, can we change the tense while reporting? Yes, we should change the tense while reporting. Usually, it, until and unless it's a... Uh, universal truth given, the tense will change to past tense. Okay? Until or unless it's a universal truth. Otherwise, it will change to past tense. Okay. Uh, next. Number 12. Seems, sounds easy. Do you work in London? She asked me if I worked in London. Yeah, she asked me if I worked in London. Correct. 13 is the longer sentence. Could you tell me where the post office is? 13. She asked me to tell her where the post office was or she asked me if I could tell her where the post office was. She asked me to tell her or if I, both are correct. Whatever is given in the bracket, if you have written that format, that is also correct. Without the bracket, what is written, that format is also correct. These two formats are correct. Okay, next. Question 14. Come here. Simple instruction. She told me to come there. Come here. Here becomes there within the bracket. Okay, Deborah, I'll tell you. Let me finish the answer. I'll tell you the difference. She ordered me to come there. Yeah, fine. You can write she ordered me to. Yeah, it sounds like an order. You may use the reported verb as order. Okay? Yes. Next question is number 14. Done. Okay, 15. I have never been to Wales. You can check the answer. She said that she had never been to Wales. Wales is a place. Wells is a place in London. Okay. Next question, number 16. Have you ever seen Lord of the Rings? Suppose somebody asks this question to you. In the direct speech, the person will ask you, have you ever seen the Lord of the Rings? This question will become, she asked me if I had ever seen the Lord of Rings. The Lord of Rings will remain within uh, single inverted because name of a movie. So it will remain within single inverted. Hmm. Next, number 70. I don't like mushrooms. She said that she did not like mushrooms. She said that she did not like mushrooms. Number 18, don't be silly. 18, she told me not to be silly. She told me not to be silly. 
next 19. Would you mind waiting a moment, please? This is a polite way of talking. Would you mind waiting a moment, please? Answer. She asked me to wait for a moment or she asked me if I would mind waiting a moment. Both are correct. Yes, yes, Deborah, I'll tell you the answer. Let us finish the 10th one, then I'll tell you the answer. Okay. 20th one, last one. How often do you play sport? Number 20, how often do you play sport? She asked me how often I played. Play becomes played. Okay, here Deborah has asked me a very interesting question. This is over, guys. Okay. I think you can do this. The rest that you could not. And some homework, if you want to take, I'll give you part two as homework. Part two, just take it. I'll give you the answer on Friday. You can take this as homework. Similar, similar, but it's only that another set is here. If you want to practice more, take a screenshot, please. Okay, Deborah has asked me a question. What is the difference between say, tell, and ask? Can any one of you first tell me? That's a good question. He has asked. There is a difference between these three words, three verbs. Say, tell, and ask. What is the difference that you have come to know? See, say is the most common way of saying something. Say when you say goodbye to someone, you say thank you to someone, you say please to someone. Okay. Uh, you say happy birthday to someone, you wish someone, you say something. So say is used for your talk that you do every day. Uh, ask is basically for a question. When you ask a question, that time when we use the reported speech, we say he asked me or she asked me, okay? But somebody does not ask you anything, but just gives you some number, like tomorrow we go to a movie. So in this, when I use a reported speech, I will not write, she asked me to go to a movie tomorrow. I will say she told me, because she just told me that was not a question, okay? Yes, ask is usually followed with a question mark. And how we can ask is usually accompanied by a question mark. That's true. Okay. Say is every day when you talk, the speech that you use, that is say. Tell is followed by a person. Please tell me. Me is the object or the person. She told him. He tells her. We tell you. So tell is always often followed by a subject. Tell will be followed by a subject. Okay. He told us, she tells me, I tell you. Okay. It will be followed by a subject. For say, you do not need a subject. You don't say he says me. You don't need a subject. You simply say, he says, that's it. You do not need who you are saying. That subject is not needed. Ask for question, say for everything else, okay? And tell when you need a object, when you need the person after asking a question or telling something, okay? So tell is usually followed by a person, okay? For said, it is not necessary. When you ask, you are actually looking for an answer to a question asked to you. You're looking for an answer for a question. But tell is nothing to do with question. Tell is not a question. Tell is just telling something, simply telling something. Yeah, ask is to look for an answer. Hiruni, you're right. Ask is to look for an answer. Tell is not necessarily to look for an answer. Everything else is ten. If it is not a question, it is tell. Okay. I believe it will be clear to you whoever asked me that question, but good that you asked because I could clarify it to the rest of you also. So this is it. And uh, yeah, the rest of it, you can take a screenshot as homework for you to practice. That's it. So today we completed uh, the last part of grammar. So far, if you remember, I showed you that page. 
on uh, wait for a moment at the beginning of these classes i had showed you what all we were going to cover and we have covered almost everything okay just we need some practice some more practices needed i think you are prepared to take the test on 25th if you have followed what we did in the class if all of you have followed what we have done then you are ready for your test you don't need a lot of preparations but you do need your presence of mind okay never think that without the presence of mind you can do so read the question carefully because some of you not all of you are still making some silly mistakes when i'm ask, asking you you giving me some answer it should not be okay so those are all silly mistakes yeah this was our module at the beginning what practice should we do vipul whatever i have shown you here in the class similar type of questions you can do okay for your exam yeah so i'm just sharing my screen this was the content part this was the content part fill in the blanks reading comprehension grammar today we were doing grammar again every class we have done grammar we have done parallelism and modifiers for sentence correction okay then we have done para jumbles and paragraph completion and inference then you have done analogies last class we were doing analogies i told you the trick for analogy is look at the part of speech where the noun is to verb verb is to noun noun is to adjective what is the relationship between the given pair okay then find a similar relationship reading comprehension also we have done yes reading comprehension we have done i told you what are the kinds of question to expect in a reading comprehension question how to prepare reading comprehension okay sentence correction we are doing every day today also we were doing sentence correction the other day also we have done one word substitution idioms and phrases this also we have done okay so more or less we have covered whatever was discussed whatever was shown over here okay. but i will take a full test of all these type of questions i will take a full test a very similar test on coming friday be on time start on time let's see how much you score in a full test and i'm going to time you also okay so i will give you those many questions and i will time you like whatever is this given over here you have uh, okay i guess you must have appeared for your mock test have you appeared for your mock test i believe you must have yeah in this you have for english you have verbal 40 questions so i will give you a question paper of 40 questions on friday okay and 40 marks and i'll see how you perform we'll see how you perform it will include whatever is there in the syllabus so i have a for very similar question very good appeared those who appeared would you did you get a good score those who have appeared your mock test did you get a good score have your paper been corrected and given to you what was your score in the english section 40 out of 40 how much did you score score not released but some of you know yeah okay those who have got in 30s are doing good those who are in late uh, tw 28 like 28 29 can do better vipul you need to buck up okay so see the area where you lost marks and practice that area that's why the mock test were given to you see the 34 is good score not bad 38 is even better 32 so anything above 30 35 is really good guys you will be able to clear the paper so i will give you a test from my side on friday be on time log in i will not give extra time so if the class starts at 3 by 3 5 i will give you the paper 
and you will solve and then there and then i'll give you the answer sheet also you'll correct and tell me how much you're getting it will contain all this all all fill in the blanks grammar parajumbles analogies one word idioms everything everything that we have discussed in these classes so more or less your course is complete only practice you need to do the more practice you do the better for you yes mock tests are important gaurav very important okay that gives you the confidence to appear for the final test that's why mock tests are conducted so today we stop here okay and our next class will be your last class with me next class which is your mock test will be your last class with me i'll give you the answer then and there after you take the test so be on time guys i will catch you again on friday till then have a good time take care